Hi, this is Mike from Party of Four Crafts on Etsy. And today I'm going to be answering the question, why won't my text union with my circle in Inkscape? And along the way, I think you'll learn a lot of other things as well. So first, let's start off by drawing the circle. If you draw a circle normally, it'll come out as an oval if you do it that way. You don't want that for this. You want a perfect circle. So in this case, that's not acceptable. So I'm going to delete that and I'll show you two ways to make a perfect circle. First of all, you can hold down the control key while you're dragging. And if you go approximately diagonally, it makes perfect circles. Um, it'll let you go like in 15, 30, 45 degree increments as well, but it pretty much snaps to a perfect circle. But let's say, delete that, um, let's say you didn't get a perfect circle. You could also click the top arrow up here or press F1, and then your measurements appear up in this top bar. And so I can, if, if I just type in a measurement, it warps the image. But if I click this lock first and then type in a measurement, it makes sure that the two are, they're evenly expanded. So if one is twice as big as the other, once you expand it, the other one will be twice, still be twice as big. But we don't want that. So we want to type in 80 here and 80 here. Now it's a perfect circle because I've told it to be a perfect circle. So now if we get some text, I just randomly type in some text, the word monogram. And uh, I'll pick a simpler font than that. And usually uh, I like to do these in all capitals. Uh, stretch it around until it just fits inside the circle. And now hold down shift while I click the circle. And now they're both selected at the same time. Or I could draw a box. It contains both of them and it'll select both of them and now if I go path union that's that's not even close to what I wanted and that's where a lot of people get frustrated and they end up on the the Glowforge Facebook groups um, trying to find out what happened so let me show you a couple of things so the first thing is that um, you don't want to leave your text as text you want to turn it into a path and you want to turn it into a path. So first of all, you could squeeze the words, the letters together and make them touch. So if you're making a keychain or something like that, it doesn't fall apart. Or if there's no support above and below the letters, it won't fall apart. So to do that, you go to path, object to path. And now when I hit F2 or choose the node editing arrow, I can hover over each one and it gets a red outline behind it. That means that it's now a path and I could edit each one of these nodes if I wanted to. Now I don't want to do that, but I could if I wanted to. So now I can click on this one and then press F1 or click the top arrow and then use the arrow keys to make it touch. Um, but then when I go to click the next one, it clicks the whole thing. So an easier way to do this is to go object ungroup. And now each letter is its own entity and I can drag them around however I want. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to grab these two and move them over. The other thing is I hate this snap tool most of the time. So I come up here and turn that off. And then I hit Control Z to undo. Don't ever worry about trying something. You can always hit Control Z to undo it and no harm done. So I'm gonna make these so that they all touch a little bit. And you saw that one bumped up a little bit. Um, don't worry about that. I'll show you how to fix that the easy way in just a second. And make those touch. Now they're all out of alignment, but that's no big deal. We have an align and distribute bar over here. You might have to um, go turn it on to get that to come up. And if I just click on this one, um, it says center on horizontal axis. Now I click them and they all move on the same line. If I wanted to make sure that they were perfectly spaced evenly, horizontally, I could click this one, distribute centers equidistantly. Um, but now it stretched these out because this is round and this is square that didn't have the effect that I wanted it to have. So I'm going to control Z, undo that. Now they're all touching. They're all lined up. 
and they should be um, good to go. So now I can union these letters together. If you didn't and you burn these on a glow forge, where these letters overlap will be all messed up. You'll have black, black, and where they overlap will be unengraved. So you have to weld, or in Inkscape it's called union, these letters together. You're, you'll hear people um, who use Illustrator talk about welding, and people who use Inkscape talk about union, um, but it's the same thing, or Pathfinder in Illustrator. Um, so I clicked them all. If I just highlight them all with the F1 arrow, and then try to union them, it, it doesn't always work as expected. Um, that time it did, but usually I just click them all with the F2 arrow. And I, I'm going to undo that because I accidentally selected the circle too. So I'm holding down shift while I click on each one of these. Um, if they were more difficult to select and I couldn't draw a box around them, that works as well. And then I'll go Path, Union. And because they're filled in, you can't really see a difference. But if I turn off the fill by clicking this X down in the bottom left corner, and then click on it first, get rid of the fill, and then give them an outline by holding down Shift while I click a color. And I always use red uh, for things that I'm going to cut because I also have a Chinese laser. And in the Chinese laser, um, red is cut. Black is engraved and blue is score, so I've just gotten in that pattern. And on a Glowforge, it doesn't matter. Any color you can set to any one of those settings. Okay, so now those are union together. It's one outline all the way around, plus these inside things cut out, which is exactly what you want. So now I want to make this split circle sign, so I click on that. I shift click on this, and now I go path. Union, and oh, it still didn't work. There's still something else wrong with it, but I'm closer. The problem is you can't union a shape with a line. And right now, this is just a line. You see these three, these two dots and, and this handle that you can pull to adjust things. Um, that's, that's not a shape, that's a line. So what I want to do is click on it, and then I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate it. Now I have two of these circles, and they're exactly the same, and they're on top of each other. Um, you could do copy and paste, control C, control V, but it moves it. You could do control C to copy it, and then go edit, paste in place, and now I have two on top of each other. But it's easier just to click it and do control D to duplicate it. Now I have two, I'll control Z to put it back. Next thing, I need to make this smaller. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a ring, not a circle. That's how you union things together, is by unioning the letters to a ring. So if I go Path, Dynamic Offset, you'll see this little white diamond shows up here. If I click that and grab it, I can change the size of this circle, but it keeps the center in the same place. Whereas if I just resize the circle, it moves the center all around and, and it makes it harder. And with other things, it just makes them bigger, where this dynamic offset will give it an outline, which I'll cover in a future video. So now I have two circles, and if I tried to union it to these two circles, it still wouldn't work. It still just disappears. The whole thing disappears now. So what I need to do is I need to subtract this inner circle from the outer circle. So I click on one, I shift click on the other, and go path, exclusion. Now what I have here is a ring. If I fill this with a color, the ring fills in, where previously the entire circle would fill in. And it doesn't work to put a black circle in the back and a white circle in the front just to cover it up. The Glowforge will, will engrave the entire black circle. Um, so you have to make it a ring. And now, if I click on this and shift click on this, go path, union, it now gives me what I want. So these are now connected. What most people want is they want this word stretched out more and it sticks out from the sides. And then if I union those, that kind of did what we want, but not really. I need to cut a section of the circle out first to make room for the word. So I'll control Z that. I'm gonna move these words out of the way for a second. And then to cut a hole in this ring, I'm going to draw 
a rectangle here about the size of, of my text. So it doesn't have to be perfect. I can stretch the text, but you know, that's, that's pretty decent. And now I need to make sure it's centered so that it looks right when I'm done. So I shift click both of them and I click on the center on horizontal axis. And now uh, that's like that. Now you saw it moved the circle. Sometimes you want the circle to stay still and the rectangle to move. So if I wanted to do that, I'll control Z it. Because the rectangle is wider than the circle, it's considered the biggest object. So if I do relative to the smallest object, now it's going to move the rectangle instead of the circle. Or if I clicked on, so let's move this, if I click on the circle first and the rectangle second, and I say relative to first selected, then it moves the rectangle. But either way, it's now centered. And now I click on this, click on this, and go path, difference, and it's now cut a section out of the inside of that circle. So if I drag this back up here, Make sure it's overlapping a little bit, both at the top and the bottom. Stretch this. Now if I go path, union, you can see it's kind of what I wanted. It's, it's unioned over here, but it wasn't touching over here, and it's barely touching over here. So what I always do is I put bars across it first, so each of the letters has something to touch. So to do that, I'm just going to draw the bars with these thin rectangles. They don't need to be that big. And then I will make sure that it's centered and I want it relative to the last selected and I want it vertically uh, aligned. And then I'm going to control D this and use the down arrow so I don't have to center again. Put it right there. And then I want round ends to these. So I'm going to control draw a circle. And then with that circle, I can line it up how much I want it to overlap. And then I can shift click and align them horizontally and then control D, drag this. Oop, I forgot to unclick this. Now, I almost left an extra copy of both of those on here. And if you do that and you load it into the Glowforge app, you're going to find if you have two layers overlapping that you forgot about, the head will move and the laser won't do anything. The laser won't turn on. And it's very confusing the first time it happens to you. But if you have two of the same shape overlapping, the Glowforge can't handle that. And it, it looks like it's trying to cut, but it doesn't do anything. So I'm going to highlight all of these now, make sure they're still aligned. Then I'll take this and shift click this and control D and then move it straight down approximately where I want it. Highlight all these, align them. And now click, shift click, shift click, and I'll union these. So now those are union together. Click, shift click, shift click. Uh, union these and now I want to union the bar to the circle first path union oh I need to move it down a bit it's it's sticking out a little and I didn't notice it so if I want to move it just a little bit I hold down the alt key a l t while I use the arrows to move it down just a tiny bit at a time if I just hit the arrow it moves a lot but the alt arrow it moves a little bit at a time so now that they're not overlapping too much path union, now it's a smooth line on the bottom. Come down here, shift click, path union, grab my text and bring it up here. Make sure it overlaps a little bit, but not too much. It goes left and right as far as I want. I'm going to make sure that it's centered. It's all centered. Click, shift click, and then path and union. So there it is, that's a very simple split sign that we have there. Now you can union shapes inside there. I think I just recently had a pumpkin that I was working with. Um, let me see if this is the one. Yeah, so just to play with, we could take this SVG of a pumpkin, paste it in here, that's way too big. So I wanna shrink it down to about two inches. I want to lock that so 
keeps it shaped. Now I have to find it. It always does that. And I can bring this up here. And now another thing, if, if you want to zoom quickly, if I want to zoom to the size of the page, I can just hit the number five. I want to zoom to the size of the object that's highlighted. I can hit number three. Now, one was too small, one was too big, but if I click the whole thing and hit three, then that's perfect. So now I can bring this up here, shrink it down a bit. And shift click, shift click, path union, and now you have a Halloween split sign. Um, so not too bad. We learned a lot in there. We learned about aligning, holding down control, using three and five to zoom, um, path union, path object to path. Um, there, were, there were a lot of lessons in that, that one little um, project, but people have paid off their entire Glowforges just by making split signs like this. And this simple circle split sign and you just put different shapes instead of the pumpkin, you can make anything, Christmas, Halloween, Mother's Day, any holiday you want. Sports, I, I have sports split signs on my Etsy page. There's infinite number of possibilities for what you can do with it. All right, thanks for joining me. I'll be releasing a, another video soon that has a lesson like this that hopefully you'll, you'll learn a lot of other things along with answering the, the question of the video.